Hi, I'm Ed McFarland, the chef owner of Ed's Lobster Bar, and welcome to Ed's Eats. I inverted that a little bit today because this is my video for OkCupid or whatever dating service I'm gonna go on today. So I'm hoping that you're gonna watch this cooking demo and you're gonna to wanna to come and eat with me and that's gonna be our first date. Hi, welcome to Ed's Eats. I'm Ed McFarlane, the chef owner of Ed's Lobster Bar. And today, I'm gonna to make pan roasted fish. I have Pollock, super sustainable option as opposed to cod. I really love it, it's white and flaky. I'm gonna give you two techniques for pan roasting that fish, and we're gonna make a complete dish. Something I really like to make at home and in the restaurant, we're gonna do sauteed cabbage with bacon. I'm gonna cut it in a lardone style. Carrot, and a little bit of garlic in there. It gets Splash up with a little white wine, a little flambe, maybe yes, maybe no. Kind of steams off, helps the cabbage cook, but we're really going for a saute, and we're gonna make a macadamia mint pesto. And we're just gonna use mint leaves, olive oil, and macadamia nuts, nothing else. Garlic is optional in that. If you want the garlic, go right ahead, but I don't think it's necessary because I don't want the garlic to overpower the flavor of the dish. Our fish is mild in flavor. We really wanna get that mint macadamia nut to really explode on the plate and we really want the flavor of that cabbage, carrot, and bacon to come through. All the flavors melted together, keep them separate when you eat them together, it's a flavor burst in your mouth. So we're ready to get started. We have all of our ingredients laid out in front of us. Flour, our two pieces of filet fish, white wine, butter, our slab bacon, and just a real quick tip on the slab bacon, I use a double smoked bacon, something that's a little drier and not as fatty. We don't want to leach a lot of fat into the pan and we're gonna cook this with a little bit of oil. We have our mint and macadamia nuts, our olive oil, our cabbage and carrot, and a little bit of garlic for the sliced garlic and the cabbage. So we're gonna start here with the bacon and we're gonna move through all the cycles. And the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this little bit of skin off the bottom of the bacon. And we're gonna discard that and we really don't have any use for that. Cut it into a lardone style. So I'm gonna make slices on the bacon and you wanna make sure you have a sharp knife and the colder the bacon is for this, the easier it's gonna be for you to cut it. So we're gonna cut all our bacon like that and, and it's a rough cut. And you know, if you've watched any of the videos before, you know I'm not a stickler for perfect cubes or perfect cuts. You know, we're cooking at home and even in the restaurant, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect cubes. You just wanna get the right technique down, prepare it the right way and have it be full flavor. That's what we're really, that's what's really important not overly concerned about the actual cubing and, and dicing the exact perfect cuts. It's about getting the techniques right. You can worry about getting fancier with your cutting later on. So what I'm gonna do here is I have a pan on medium heat on the stove here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of oil into the pan. Not too much, just a little bit. I'm gonna add the bacon right into the pan, and then I'm gonna come back over. We're gonna let that cook, and we're gonna keep an eye on it just to make sure that it's not burning. We're gonna mix it around in the pan. We'll use um, a spatula or a wooden spoon. And we want it to cook slowly because we want it to render whatever fat is in there and then get crisp. It's gonna take maybe uh, about 10 minutes of time on medium heat. Maybe we're gonna have to adjust the heat up or down to get the desired result, but Right now we start on medium heat and if we have to lower it, we'll lower it down. Next up is we're gonna prepare our cabbage, our garlic and our carrot, which is all gonna go in the pan at the same time once the bacon is ready. So we're just gonna get that cut up and you'll see I just have a quarter of a cabbage and I'm going to just make nice slices. I wanna make the slices as thin as possible. And remember, adjust the amount that you're making based on how many people you're feeding. If I was gonna feed four people, most likely I would use half a cabbage. And this is a great dish as well because if you make this ahead of time, you wanna do a whole cabbage, a bigger piece of bacon, you wanna have a whole carrot as opposed to a quarter carrot or half a carrot in there, and you wanna have that in the refrigerator as an extra dish that you can kind of have with anything. You could have this with chicken, you can do a stir fry beef with this. It just doesn't have to be about pan roasted fish. I like to give you options that you can mix and match up with. So if you want to grill a piece of chicken breast or saute a piece of chicken breast and put this on top, chop it up or mix it in there, it's going to be delicious as well. I think sauteed shrimp is another good choice as well with this sauteed cabbage. So remember, it just 
doesn't have to be the fish with this garnish. And then when you get to the end, if you can't get the slices, you know, we'll just cut it up small. The flavor of the bacon goes really well with the cabbage once we're cooking. So I have my cabbage in my bowl. The next step is gonna to be to slice the garlic and dice the carrot. First, I'm just gonna give my bacon on the stove a quick stir. Okay, so I have my carrot. I have uh, approximately half a carrot here and I peeled it already. I don't think anybody needs a demonstration on peeling carrots, so I think we're good with that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one cut on the carrot. So this way my carrot sits flat on the cutting board. And that's just a way to keep the carrot flat and keep it from cutting yourself. I'm gonna do the same thing, we're just gonna make slices of the carrot. Once we have the carrot sliced, we're gonna cut it into a little bit thicker, of a julienne style cut. So once we have it cut into a julienne, I'm gonna to to turn your face here so you can see what I'm doing. And we're just gonna cut cubes. We're gonna quickly slice my three cloves of garlic and do the same thing. We're ready for the macadamia nut pesto. And I have this attachment on my hand immersion blender. If you have a food processor with a small bowl, that works just perfect. But this is essentially just the same thing as a food processor. I just find this easier to use. I have it, it's more accessible. So I have my macadamia nuts and drop those in. I have a healthy portion of mint. So if you wanted to add garlic, now would be the time. One or two cloves of garlic max to this, or it's gonna be way too powerful. And you really want the mint and macadamia flavor to come through. We're gonna add a nice amount of olive oil in here. A little bit of salt and pepper, because everything needs to be seasoned. After we finish this, we're gonna check the seasoning again as well, and maybe we need to add some more. And this may need a little more oil as well. So let's quickly check this. And it definitely needs more oil. Let me just give you a quick tilt at the camera, but it's really looking good. And that's all done with pulsing. And the macadamia nut almost looks like chopped garlic in there. This looks perfect, take a look at that. Consistency I'm looking for here. You can see the chopped up nuts, the chopped up mint. The flavor of the mint comes through. The crunch of the macadamia nut, it's really fantastic and you're still getting all of the flavors. The olive oil I chose was a little mild so it's not overpowering. The mint is adding a little bit of spice that you don't normally get from mint. And I think it's a nice little touch that you're really going to enjoy when you eat this dish. This is another item I like to make in a larger quantity because you can save this and use this on so many other items. I mean, you could put this on an English muffin and it's gonna taste delicious. Or on top of a little bit of ricotta cheese with a little bit of sea salt, dynamite. So look at this. The bacon is perfect now. It's crispy and it's exactly what we're looking for. I'm gonna leave all of that in the pan. I wanna cook the cabbage in whatever little bit of oil and fat is in there. So we're just gonna go ahead and dump this right over. And we're gonna turn the heat up now to a medium high. We're gonna add a little bit of salt on top of here. Not too much. A little bit of pepper. We turn the heat up to medium high. And I'm trying to get it mixed around in the pan well. Also, make sure it's cooking. One of the things we're gonna do here now is we're gonna add our white wine in and we're gonna cover the pan so that the cabbage steams a little bit to help speed up the cooking process. And it's not too much wine, it's just a little bit of wine. We're gonna cover the pan for maybe three minutes. We don't want it to burn, so we make sure that we're not losing all of the moisture in the pan, but we definitely want to get color on the cabbage once the wine evaporates. Our cabbage is about three quarters and halfway done, and 
kind of a quick toss in the pan. Um, we're going to just check the flavor. And, you know, flavor coming out of this is amazing. Until you've actually made sauteed cabbage like this, you don't realize how good it is and how all the flavors just, they just all come together and it's like, the smell is just so great and it awakens the senses and really makes you want to eat, get you prepared to eat. I'm going to season both sides of the fish with salt and pepper. We're ready for our fish and you'll see my pan is smoking. Let me just show you the camera. That's the sign that your pan is ready. Don't be afraid to use high heat. It's also a sign that you need to turn your heat down. If you just throw oil in the pan when it's that hot, your pan is gonna flame up. But you want your pan to be hot, turn the gas down, add your oil, and your fish is not going to stick in this pan. It should not stick. As long as you have a hot pan and hot oil, you're in good shape. We're gonna take our filet with, without the flour, and the pan has to be hot so it doesn't stick. Also, you want to be able to flip this fish over before you put it in the oven. And the fish without the flour tends to be a little bit more delicate as when you cook with the flour, the fish is going to be held together by the flour coating. The fish like this can tend to break apart a little bit, so it's a little bit more of a delicate technique. However, personally, I prefer to cook like this because I don't like flour on my food. I don't like flour on my sauces unless I'm having deep fried food, deep fried fish. So for me, this is the better preparation, but at home, if you're not used to cooking fish, by all means, put the flour. This way your fish doesn't stick in the pan and you don't break it apart. And then once you become more comfortable and familiar cooking the fish, then you can switch over and start cooking without the flour. So let me show you what I did. The pan was super hot. I turned the gas back up once the oil was hot, but you'll see what I did. I'm making sure that the fish didn't stick. If your fish did stick in the pan, let the fish stay there, let it get crisp and let it cook off the pan. And then you could take your spatula once it's really crisp and break it off the bottom of the pan just by scraping lightly. And you'll see I'm not using a nonstick pan here. I'm using, I'm using a stainless surface because it's gonna get hotter and it's gonna hold its heat better. And you'll see right here, I have a nice sear on this fish and I'm ready to put this in the oven. The oven's been preheating at 450 degrees and the rest of this cooking time is gonna be about five to seven minutes in the oven. And we're gonna serve it exactly like that, facing up. Now we have our fish with the flour, which is a lot easier of a cooking technique. There's less chance of the fish breaking apart. You still want your pan to be hot, but not as hot because you don't want the flour to burn in the pan. So we're going to just lightly, lightly dust this. Very lightly. You see, I'm not putting, I'm not putting very much flour on here at all. It's, it's it's barely coated, but it's enough to keep it from sticking. And we're gonna add our oil to the pan. And I'm gonna add more oil than I would have if I wasn't using the flour. And the same thing, we're gonna put our fish in. We're gonna make sure it doesn't stick after we put it in by shaking it a little bit. We're gonna let that cook and get a nice crisp coating on top which it's similar in time to the fish without the flour. Give it a little shake to make sure that it's not sticking. And this flour coating is gonna ensure that your fish doesn't stick to the pan if it's hot. It's also gonna help keep your fish together if you're not used to handling filet fish. This is the easier preparation method. I'm gonna leave that up. another 30 seconds to a minute, but I wanna show you the cabbage, which has been cooking slowly over the heat and it's getting this beautiful, nice color on it just cooking slowly. And that's really what we're looking for. This cabbage is done now. So we're just gonna leave it on the back of the stove. And you see here, we have a nice flour crust on top. And I'm flipping this a little sooner because it's going in the oven, because this is gonna continue to cook on top. If you were completely cooking this on the stove, I would leave it cooking on the top side for maybe another minute before I flipped it over. So we're ready to go in the oven and it's gonna take about the same amount of time as our other filet. So just to give you a hint, when you wanna check your filets, you're gonna take the fish out and just push on it. If it's still firm, then the fish needs to cook a little bit longer. If it's a white fish, because white flesh fish, 
you're cooking all the way through. If you're cooking another type of fish where you're cooking it to temperature, such as a salmon or a tuna, there's a different cooking technique. But here, we just want to push on it. If you feel it breaking apart, it's ready. If it's not breaking apart, it needs to cook a little bit longer. While our fish is finishing cooking, we're going to finish our cabbage here. And I have it back on the heat. And I have a little knob of butter over here. No, it's a little more than a knob of butter. It's probably about a tablespoon of butter. I'm gonna drop that right in there. And I am definitely from the school that butter makes everything better. There is no substitute for real butter in your food. Check the seasoning. And that was a nice piece of garlic I got. We are ready to go. And look at that, it looks beautiful. We're gonna pick that up with a spatula. And I can feel that that's ready. Just by touching it, you can feel the flesh breaking apart underneath. I have our fish with the flour as well. Both of them are ready to go. And we're ready to make our plates. Get our macadamia pesto on top of this fish and really dig in. So, first thing we have, Beautiful cabbage and bacon. That right down there in the center of the plate. And you'll see a quarter of a cabbage is almost the perfect amount for this. So like I said, we're gonna use a spatula for the fish here. This way it doesn't break apart. And you'll see it just comes out of the pan very easily because your pan was hot. Right on top of there. Be careful with these pans because they were in the oven and you definitely do not want to touch the handle with your bare hand. It's going to stick and burn and it hurts. <laughs> so one of the things we do, just a little technique, and I do it here in the house with my family, is when I have a pan that comes out of the oven, even if it's sitting on top of the stove, I leave a towel sitting on top of it. It's something we do in restaurants as well. So other cooks and other people walking around know not to grab that pan, or if they do, they know to take it with the towel. So here it is, our macadamia nut pesto. and. I'm going to that drizzle on top a little bit. And for me, I don't even need any lemon with this. The macadamia nut pesto is all the extra flavor that this fish needs to be perfect. I could eat this meal every day and I'm ready to dig in. Please don't forget, subscribe, like, and comment. We want to hear your thoughts and we want to know if you made this dish at home. So please send us a message and let us know how it came out. If you need a recipe or if you have any questions or need some advice, let us know. I can't stop eating today. This is fantastic. Caramelization on the cabbage with the bacon and carrot, the pan roasted fish, the macadamia mint pesto, it all just melts together well. You can taste all the flavors separately. They combine together. And the only thing I'm missing right now is my glass of white wine. But I'm gonna keep eating. You keep watching. We look forward to seeing you next time on Ed's Eats. Thank you so much for joining us.